Hey everyone, Jermaine Lucier here. Maybe you've seen some of the tours I've done in my apartment and all the art I collect. Uh, and this, this is not that. We're going to do something different this time. I'm going to do an art tour, yes, but we're going to do something to celebrate the opening of Star Wars The Force Awakens. We're going to just tour Star Wars art and Star Wars collectibles too. Now, I set, up my, I set myself up with a challenge. I said, can I get up every single piece of Star Wars art I own, no matter what? That meant taking down stuff I love. That meant putting stuff into frames that it doesn't fit. Just craziness. But I was able to do it, and now we're going to show you. Let's do it. So here's Craig Drake's Falcon on Metal. As usual, the Ali Moss Star Wars set remains in a place of prominence. And here's some detail on the Moss Star Wars pieces, which are regularly imitated, but never duplicated. Boom. If you watch some of the other tours, you recognize the Scott C. print wall, but I made sure that both of my Star Wars pieces were now on display. And my Disneyland portrait is now a Jordan Monsell Chewbacca. What's different about this tour is that not only will I do art, I will do some collectibles as well. So here you see some Star Wars The Force Awakens Black Series along with prints by Sam Smith as well as the Sphero BB-8. Above BB-8 we have some Blu-rays including Star Wars on Blu-ray, Star Wars on DVD, as well as a sideshow collectible premium format Han Solo in Carbonite hanging on the wall. We've got the brand new PlayStation 4 limited edition Darth Vader with Battlefront. Moving from the shelves to our bar section, most of it's not Star Wars, but if you look at these Tom Whalen matchbooks, you will notice that one of them is from the Cantina. And what would the kitchen be without a little Star Wars? Maybe some ice cube trays, cookie cutters, coffee mate. The bookshelf is also an essential spot for Star Wars stuff. Be it a poster book, costume book, J.W. Rensler's essential making of books, new canon, or legends. On top of the bookshelf, we have one of my Scott C. originals. This one being from The Empire Strikes Back. As well as, you know, just... Us and Jedi Mickey, some autographs from Star Wars dining at Hollywood and Vine. We finish our tour of the living room with a little display of Star Wars Legos. Ray's speeder is a new addition. This is the ghost with full Rebels minifig team, which means the Phantom is also there. Ultimate Collector Series, Slave One. And then this is a custom from Johnny Chang. We all know the throne room scene. I mean, just look at how detailed the back of that Slave 1 is. And next, this little area. In previous tours, I've shown you every single piece from this space. But this is just Star Wars. So here's Craig Drake's amazing rendition of Han. A hilarious convention piece about what happened when Lando lost the Falcon. I even put up this exclusive lithograph we got at Force Friday Toys R Us. And this is an awesome piece by Sean Dove. Jumping back up, Ian Glaubinger's Hoth piece is one of my favorites. Han Solo on Hoth is something that you're gonna see a lot more of. And you know what? Star Wars also means space balls. So this Rich Pellegrino Darth Helmet is a favorite. More Craig Drake, Boba Fett, and then this exclusive Dave Perillo Snaggletooth print. Here's a Star Wars piece by 100% Soft from A New Hope. Here's C-3PO as a Super by Mike Mitchell. And then Mondo's Ten Banthas by J. Ryan. Above the door, we have J.C. Richards' beautiful piece called The Impossible. And then the start of two trilogy sets. First, here's Matt Ferguson's New Hope. Below that, 
the D23 exclusive Drew Struzan Force Awakens piece. A New Hope by Dave Perillo. That's part one. Here's part two of Ferguson, his Empire Strikes Back piece. To the left of that, Rich Kelly's piece from The Art Awakens. And here's part two of Perillo's Empire Strikes Back. And above that, we finish Ferguson with Return of the Jedi. Across the hallway, we have Dan Mumford's reimagining of Jabba's sail barge from Return of the Jedi. And like I said, Star Wars also includes space balls, so this awesome piece by Philip Ellering is a part of the collection. On the way into the bedroom, we have a couple of Mike Mitchell JLUs. There's Big Wheel, which is Biggs, Luke's best friend. And yeah, that's not Star Wars, but oh wait, is it? Yes, it is. This intermediate area to the right has some Star Wars pieces. There's Matt Taylor's Art Awakens piece of Return of the Jedi. This is Tony Hodgkinson's Force Awakens Stormtrooper. That is an original painting. You can see the bleed on here. And then he's pointing from Return of the Jedi to DKNG's Force Awakens piece. Oh, and there's also a one of one Metal Yoda by Tom Whalen. From there, we're going to go into the bedroom, and the first thing you'll notice is this brand new Gab's Bottleneck Gallery triptych. Above the closet, there's a one-of-one one Hansel and Carbonite Flory that I commissioned, and Mark Englert's Empire Strikes Back piece from The Art Awakens. Above the bed, you have a DKNG Millennium Falcon. Dan McCarthy Hoth piece, and then a flank on the other side is a DKNG X-Wing. And if you thought the bed was messy, it is a little bit. I'm trying to figure out if I want to wear my Bounty Hunter hoodie or some kind of t-shirt. If there's anything in particular. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let me think. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe that. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. On the other side of the bed, this is Eric Tan's brand new Force Awakens piece. Opposite that, we have the completion of the Dave Perillo trilogy with Return of the Jedi. And above the bed, this is the other Dan McCarthy Star Wars piece, Dagobah. Now, it's Star Wars, so it's time to put up all the prints, including the bathroom. This wasn't a Star Wars priest, but now it is. Bad Robot. And then another DKNG, this time Eagle One from Spaceballs. Stepping away from the prints for a bit, these are my Star Wars vinyl mations, mostly vinyl mations. Got everything from Hoth to the Star Wars Christmas special to Star Wars Rebels. Then behind the door, this is Tim Doyle's variant of his Millennium Falcon piece and a Rob Jones, Jason Edmondson original called I Wish I Shot First. Now we're headed to, oh wait, I forgot. First in this bathroom, there is another Mark Englert Star Wars piece. We've also got a horribly framed, but temporary spot for Andy Fairhurst's Star Wars character trilogy. Okay, enough messing around. This is the real reason I did this. This is my Craig Drake, one of 15 mega metal Han Solo in carbonite. It is six feet tall. It is life size. It is incredibly detailed on metal. And it might be my favorite thing in the world. Just look at that when you walk in to that room. In that last shot you might have noticed this shelf. Plenty of Star Wars stuff. We have Hoth Han Solo from Sideshow Collectibles. We've got a Hoth Han Solo action figure still on card 
And then a Gentle Giant Hoth Han Solo. I told you I liked it. Mega card. And then to the left of that, this is my first Hot Toys of who else? Han Solo. Below him, we have my Icons, not Master Replica, Icons, the original Skywalker lightsaber. Edition 1793 of 10,000. This was the first big Star Wars piece I ever bought, and I'm even more excited now about it as this will be the lightsaber in The Force Awakens. Here are some pins that I recently got on a trip to Disney, and on top of it are the entire Series 1 of the Star Wars Vinyl Mations. And to the right of that, there's almost too much going on here, so we're going to take it one at a time. First, let's concentrate on the big boy. Master Replicas, Han Solo Blaster from The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, one of my favorite pieces ever. We have a Hoth Han Solo, yes, more Hoth Han Solo, Mighty Mugs, uh, Pop Hoth Han Solo. In the back you will see some limited edition Disney Vinylmation still in the box. That one's signed by the artist. We'll pull back another pin. I collect Carbonite. There's a Craig Drake pin. Two Lego pieces. A Matt Ritchie cool pin. Hoth Han Solo Lego guy on card. That's Hoth Han flying a speeder. This was my new magic band. This is a Jord Monsell original paper cut of Han Solo. And why not? How about Han Solo as a character from Cars? I promise we're almost done, but there is yet another Star Wars shelf in this room. Highlighted by my Code 5 collectibles Millennium Falcon replica. Just something I've owned for a lot, a lot of years that I still love very, very much. Star Wars number two. Han Solo variant cover. Han Solo flying a mini Millennium Falcon. Yeah, back there is General Grievous's uh, little spinner thing. Sort of in the back because really that shelf is about the UCS X-Wing fighter by Lego. With its little baby and then a beautiful R2-D2 sixth scale by Sideshow Collectibles. I said I was going to show you everything, so you know, if I get bored, I always have a couple little things sitting around. Wait, you thought I only had one lightsaber? No, of course I have more than one. This is my Master Replicas Count Dooku lightsaber. One of my favorite lightsabers, even if the movie does kind of stink. The Lego Star Wars hat. And yes, that is a crack there when I transported it here. To LA from New York. The plastic cracked. The saber's fine though. Yes, it happened only for Star Wars, but I had to break the sanctity of the stout room to fit every single piece of Star Wars stuff, like I said, such as this amazing Battle of Yavin piece by Anthony Petrie. That I'd zoom in on the detail, but it would just take another 15 minutes. And of course, what Star Wars tour would be complete? without Tyler Stout's Star Wars Trilogy. Three of my favorite pieces, three of the coolest pieces, detailed, beautiful, I said that already. And that's that. And so that's how the apartment's gonna stay until the end of the year, once I've seen Star Wars The Force Awakens. Let's just hope it was worth the effort. Uh, I'm Jermaine Lucier. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jermaine Lucier and read more of my stuff on io9.com. Thanks a lot.